one sentence. My leg is completely dead. Last night, Conor McGregor faced a huge upset in UFC 257 when Dustin Poirier absolutely obliterated his leg and took him out with the TKO in round two. Let's talk about how he was able to do that. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, I break down injuries as they happen so that an average fan can better understand them. If you want to stay up to date, make sure to like and subscribe. For now, let's get back to discussing this huge upset. So we're going to start by looking at the method that Dustin Poirier used to completely destroy Conor McGregor. I'll talk about the anatomy and why it was so effective. And, at, and last, I have a bit of a surprise for you at the end, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Let's start by looking off at these kicks that Dustin Poirier landed on Conor McGregor. So you'll see here, one, two, three, four, five. They look painful. And that, that was when his leg completely gave out. And I'm pretty sure there were actually more kicks in there. So Dustin Poirier did say that his strategy was to land these low kicks, because that area of the leg is very fragile and can be easily compromised. If we look at the takedown of Conor McGregor right here, you're gonna see as he gets backed into the corner, this is where his leg completely gives out. And you'll just see right there, the leg completely gives out. He's gone and then Dustin Poirier goes to town, finishes off the fight, gets pulled off, declared the winner. So what is the science behind calf kicks and why do they work so well? So this is your anatomy specimen and this is your inner leg. This is your outer leg. So Dustin Poirier was absolutely hammering the muscle of this left leg. If you look at all the conference footage afterwards, essentially Conor McGregor said, I, my muscle was absolutely obliterated. Now, why are they so effective in this area? Well, it's actually using anatomy to your advantage. So this muscle was constantly getting hit and hit uh, once and again and again. When muscle gets hit, it creates microtrauma and bleeding and you get swelling. When you have swelling of these muscles, you start to compress important nerves. So I spoke about this nerve in a previous video of mine and this nerve is your common fibular nerve. It's this guy right here and it latches around the outside aspect of your leg. So if you go below your knee and feel on the outside aspect of your leg, there's a bit of a bone there. And right above that bone, which is your fibular head, is the common fibular nerve. Now this nerve will now divide into two more, but essentially what this nerve does is it dives into these muscle bellies. So you can imagine, I'll take off this muscle belly here. If these muscles become swollen, they're gonna compress this nerve and impact the function. This nerve here is responsible for two really important things. One is to bring up the foot and dorsiflex it or bring it up. So it's the opposite of pressing down a gas pedal. And the second is it actually helps you turn your foot outwards. So everts your foot. When there is a lot of swelling in this area due to repetitive calf kicks, that nerve becomes entrapped and momentarily will actually lose function. So you develop a small type of compartment syndrome in the area where the pressure is so strong, it squeezes the nerve and it decreases the function. Because of that, you can lose feeling on the side of your leg. You actually develop something called a foot drop. So the muscles that bring your foot up no longer work. So you can't actually bring your foot up. And that's an issue in MMA. And that's what caused Conor McGregor to actually fall. He was no longer able to control his foot enough and essentially just hit the mat and Dustin was able to finish him off. The other symptom that you could get in addition to the numbness and the, the inability to move your foot appropriately is also extreme pain. Because this is a short-lived swelling of the actual calf, these do get better with time. The swelling comes down and usually there's really no permanent nerve damage, but it can be debilitating in a 10 minute fight as we saw in UFC 257. Why was Conor McGregor so susceptible to these types of kicks? It really comes down to stance. This guy fights with a karate and boxer stance. Conor McGregor's legs are pretty much front and back, whereas Muay Thai fighters fight more diagonally to open up the hip to allow for a roundhouse kick. This is his crux, and this is why he had such a difficult time against Dustin Poirier. So because his foot is out here, it's got easy access to hit the actual calf. If he had a Muay Thai stance and he actually brought this leg out and tilted it out, trying to get ready for kicks, for example, Justin would have just hit the actual shin bone. And Conor McGregor actually notes this. He said, I tried to externally rotate my foot so he could get shin and that would actually hurt 
<laughs> his opponent, but he couldn't. So he kept getting muscle, and it was that repetitive muscular trauma which caused that compression of the common fibular nerve. So much so that, as we talked about earlier, his foot completely gives out here, and he's no longer able to step off of it, which was exactly why he was taken out at that point in time with the TKO. Now look at the aftermath of this poor man's leg, okay? So this is him walking to the pressed conference. He's got a crutch on this side. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you look at this footage, he is not lifting his right leg. He's got a bit of a foot drop. So what I mean by not lifting, if, if this is your ankle or your foot and this is your ankle, he's actually not doing this motion to lift up his foot. He's just kind of hobbling it around. That leads me to believe that his common peroneal nerve was significantly impacted and the reason why he lost the fight. So what does this mean for Conor McGregor? I mean, this was a huge upset. There were talks that Dana White was gonna schedule a rematch with the ultimate champion, Khabib. Unfortunately, that's no longer gonna happen. Take a look at this tweet, actually Khabib tweeted right after, kind of stating his opinions on what was going on. Will his leg get better? Will he come back from this? Of course, usually because this was just acute swelling in the area, a bit of ice, he's gonna have a limp for a few weeks. The nerve should calm down, the swelling should release itself, and he should regain most of his function back. In the after fight press conference, look at the response that Dustin Poirier gives when he is asked whether or not he's up for a rematch with Conor McGregor. At some point, I mean, we're one in one for knockouts, right? This is CTE Island. This ain't fight honor. He legit said CTE Island. For those who don't know, CTE stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy, which is an early type of dementia athletes get. I was like, absolutely shocked when he said that. Essentially he said, they've taken each other by TKO. These guys know the long-term effects of being in, in the octagon and he totally called it out. So athletes know about it and things like with what's in the news with Spencer Fisher and his diagnosis of, of a likely CTE, I just thought it was interesting that he brought this up, especially in a huge fight, in a fight that he won, really trying to call it out and saying, is this maybe a smart thing to do? This was a fun fight to watch. The underdog won. It's always nice to see something like that. And there was some really good anatomy to be had at the same time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them down below. For now, that's all.